Tate. And we'll see if he can have any luck here as they have come to a pause at the Hawthorne Boulevard exit ramp off of the 405 freeway. Again, this is the northbound exit ramp here in Hawthorne. You know, you almost get the impression with this particular, and of course, Colleen and David, all of these are so different, but just looking at the behavior here, you almost wonder if this driver doesn't realize how serious of a situation it is that he is not pulling over. Obviously, he's got the police behind him. Maybe he's just hoping that they will give up, but it could be as easily as he just doesn't want to be pulled over. He doesn't have insurance, maybe. Maybe he doesn't have his license on him. We know he doesn't have any plates on the car. It does raise the possibility, or the question at least, whether this is his vehicle. But assuming it's his vehicle, uh, and this is an unusual tactic here. Look at that SUV pulling in front of the suspect. Uh, this is the same unit that was trying to communicate with him at that red light to no avail, a failed attempt but a valiant effort to try and reason with the suspect as he was getting off of the freeway. But it just looks like he is continuing at a pretty casual pace here, not acting very desperate to get away, just refusing to pull over. In fact, he's stopping for most of the stoplights and uh, traffic signals. Uh, and here comes another red light. He is coming up to the crosswalk there and coming to a complete pause. Light turns green, continuing through the intersection. We are on Hawthorne Boulevard at 166th Street. CHP, again with a half a dozen units, continuing the chase but not at a very fast pace, if you will. Right, that helicopter overhead is really doing that critical work of trying to observe uh, anything that they possibly can, basically seeing a very similar picture that we're looking at here. Obviously, there's a cooler. You don't know what's in the cooler. You don't know if the suspect is armed or what's in the back seat there. Certainly, again, appears that he is the only person inside the car just refusing to uh, come to a stop here. But obviously, this is going to end eventually when this vehicle runs out of gas. He just is going to continue this joyride in the meantime along pretty, you know, empty uh, Inglewood streets here. This is holiday light traffic on a pretty uh, mellow week here. And look at this. Oh, what? look at this. I have never seen, I have never seen CHP do that. This is the different vehicle, a different unit pulling right in front of the suspect. And it makes you... Now, really wonder if they have a clearer indication that this person is not so uh, dangerous, if you will. I wonder what intelligence they are working with to uh, to come to these uh, to, to come to, to these decisions, because this is not the most orthodox way of handling these pursuits. But I would venture to say they probably, at this point, maybe put the idea of a pit maneuver on hold. Look at this! Another attempt to come up in front of him here and cut him off. And look at that, with other traffic in the way, now they're almost antagonizing him, uh, and he is just, he's just not pulling over, but they are, they are trying some really unique tactics here to try and communicate and try and block him in. We very rarely, at least here in Southern California, we very rarely see them box these vehicles in. It's something that's much more common in other jurisdictions around the country. But look at that, he's playing with a, a Coke bottle, uh, it looks it looks like an empty Coke bottle there, uh, but he just he looks he doesn't look stressed at all. He looks to be just taking a uh, you know a casual afternoon drive and uh, you know uh, obeying again a lot of the traffic rules here. I just I don't see them using a pit maneuver unless this gets more dangerous. 
Uh, again, we don't know whether the person is intoxicated. So many questions, not enough answers, but CHP certainly uh, resorting to some pretty unusual tactics that uh, I, I just, I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder why they are trying to cut him off and pull in front of him like that. Uh, yeah. Right. Right, right, especially on, you know, the roads aren't completely empty, but if they come up on an empty stretch, they can resort to some more aggressive tactics if that's what the situation uh, allows. In this case, he's probably doing about 35 miles per hour, maybe even going below the speed limit here on Hawthorne Boulevard. And he is heading, uh, he is heading out towards, uh, yeah, he's heading west out towards, uh, I want to say that's going to be Redondo Beach. He's entering Redondo Beach. Uh, PD's jurisdiction here. Again, California Highway Patrol had jurisdiction uh, on the freeway. They are still the lead agency, but they will have a decision to make whether they want to hand this off to one of these South Bay police departments or if they want to continue the pursuit at all. It is entirely up to them, and I've got to say, uh, considering how passive he is, despite the fact that he is refusing to pull over and he was wanted for speeding originally, although we haven't seen him speeding very much, and the fact that he doesn't have any plates, certainly these are, you know, infractions, but they are not major crimes. And it is certainly up to that CHP watch commander to potentially just let him go. That That's not off the table. It's not out of the question. And certainly it's something that we see quite frequently in situations like this. But they do have a handful of units dedicated to this pursuit. This is still in pursuit mode, no attempt to just put it into tracking mode or surveil him from the helicopter. They still have that helicopter overhead as well. We'll see how far off the freeway they take this, but he is going away from the 405 and pretty much away from all of California Highway Patrol's uh, primary jurisdiction. For the first time, he just went through that red light, through the intersection at Torrance Boulevard, through a red light, and that is going to, you know, increase the pressure here a little bit, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're so right about that, Colleen, uh, and it's just uh, really just, you know, you, you're just trying to put yourself in his head, which is an impossible feat, but we've seen a lot of wild and crazy chases. This is not one of them. This is a relatively slow speed pursuit uh, the time is on the side of law enforcement here, especially as long as he's not posing a major danger to other motorists. Uh, and especially as long as the roads are this quiet, you know, it, it will, you know, eventually peter out. And again, it's just up to them whether they want to follow this to the end, hand this off to another agency, or give it up altogether. Yeah, it would be. It would be. There are not a lot of CHP units ahead of him to do that because he's not in. Uh, you know, he's now in a municipal. You know, in the municipality of Redondo Beach. Uh, it would be maybe up to Redondo Beach to uh, if CHP requests assistance from Redondo Beach PD. Look at this. A little more aggressive here as he squeezes by at uh, Hawthorne Boulevard and Sepulveda, and now he's going to be on PC. Uh, no, through Sepulveda through Sepulveda heading straight out towards the beach as he continues westbound on Hawthorne Boulevard. The helicopter's still in place. That primary unit has pulled back quite a bit. Uh, but uh, unless Redondo Beach is on the frequency here and cooperating with uh, CHP, which of course they will if they're requested to, uh, I don't see any attempts at this point uh, for a spike strip. I would 
quicker see uh, maybe a pit maneuver if this gets more dangerous. But right now we're getting confirmation that this is all CHP at this point. Yeah, some suspects are yeah malintended and 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 really intent on on committing more crimes or putting more lives in danger or just the crimes are so serious the charges are so serious that they're just desperate not to go to jail. Uh, this driver is behaving quite a bit differently, almost out of fear. You almost get the sense that he's just afraid of being pulled over, afraid of confronting these officers and uh, and answering uh, for his infractions. Uh, but in any event, the law is you have to pull over. You must yield. Uh, and the longer this goes and the more uh, dangerous it gets, if it does get any more dangerous, they're going to have to resort to more uh, intense tactics. You can see some bystanders here now aware of this pursuit, streaming it on ABC7 and now posting on social media. You saw them photographing and taking videos at that intersection there through another red light. I think that's the third red light by my count. And if he continues blowing through these residential red lights, uh, that's obviously, uh, you know, unsafe. But, you know, there's not a whole lot of cars or pedestrians out in general. But it's certainly going to increase the pressure on law enforcement to uh, close in on him here. They were giving him a little, yeah, more more spectators uh, taking some videos, always good for an extra few likes and a few more followers if you're in the right place at the right time, but certainly uh, do so from a distance. And you can see him now coming up on PCH, stopping for this red light, and California Highway, Tro Highway Patrol now uh, behind him. Maybe they'll come around his left flank once again. This time it looks like they're keeping a little bit more of a distance. And Rob, if you could just widen out just one second, I want to see uh, back on the 405, there were about six units. That has now decreased to four units on the ground. You see that SUV, three other chargers, and the helicopter still overhead here as he encounters a red light at Hawthorne Boulevard and PCH. He could go through PCH here. He's just about a mile from the beach and eventually he will have to make a turn. But right now he is actually obeying this red light uh, which will turn green here right now. Yeah, how polite. That's right, weaving a little bit out, trying to put a little distance between him and that primary unit when he has a chance. He's uh, just passing Crenshaw Boulevard. We're on the edge, by the way, to give you, help you get your bearings. We're uh, kind of on the edge of Torrance, uh, either in Torrance's jurisdiction or uh, Rancho Palos Verdes. I can't tell you exactly, but uh, he is continuing down Hawthorne Boulevard. 
Holt Boulevard. It might even be the border between the two, uh, between Torrance and uh, Rancho Palos Verdes. But in any event, CHP still the lead agency here. When California Highway Patrol is in pursuit, they are almost always the solo agency involved. It is their party uh, unless they make a call that they need some mutual aid from another agency here. But in this case, they seem to have a handle on it. And we'll see what they decide to do or how much steam this guy has left as he continues into the Rolling Hills area. Well, they would, except if you noticed a moment ago, there was one unit, the, one, of the, one of the rear units, came up from behind him, sped right past him. He's now a good quarter mile to a half mile ahead of him. He's going to have to get a little bit further down Hawthorne Boulevard, assuming here comes another unit, another unit trying to slow him down, and that's going to give that, yeah, exactly right. You're exactly right, slowing him down, giving that other charger the opportunity to sp set up for a spike strip. These are, I can't stress enough, these are unconventional tactics. I can't remember the last time I saw a Southern California police officer try to actually slow a unit, slow a pursuit, a pursuit vehicle down by pulling in front like that or even attempting to box in a pursuit suspect. But they obviously have made a determination that this driver is, you know, not enough of a threat that he's going to, you know, pose a bigger risk already, but it looks like they just have not had a chance to set up for that spike strip. He's just going too uh, too too fast at this point. Uh, he slowed him down just a little bit, but that lead agent, that lead unit, uh, I don't think was able to lay anything down there. So he's continuing. He's now got, I think, all of the units back behind him. He's continuing down Hawthorne Boulevard, uh, and so far, no opportunity to set up for that spike strip. Coming up on Silver Spur Road, by the way. Rolling the window down. He's rolling the window down. That CHP officer trying to communicate again. This is a different unit that is trying to communicate with him. Now pulling it in reverse. Uh, look at that. Interesting. Uh, either he will continue the tactic of trying to look for a stop a spot to set up for that spike strip. There's another uh, local police officer that he just passed there. And now they're creating traffic breaks at intersections ahead. So that leads me to believe that maybe they're looking for an opportunity ahead to lay down that spike strip, but you don't want any civilian vehicles to uh, run over that spike strip. So you basically, you know, create that traffic break so that nobody else can, you know, join the lanes next to him or, or in front of him. But I just don't think they have enough manpower to do it. It just seems like they're a little bit behind the eight ball for a spike strip. And by the way, these spike strip attempts, when they work, they're really skillful and really, you have it's not just skill, it's also a bit of luck at the same time. They are one of the more complicated tactics to employ during a pursuit. But when you have a slow speed pursuit, you have much better odds, but in general, Spike strips are hard. They are hard tactic to set up for. They're hard to employ. It requires uh, usually a lot of manpower and a lot of times just a whole lot of luck that you have the right officer that has the spike strip ready at the right time ahead of the pursuit suspect and able to lay it down uh, without uh, any collateral damage. So a lot of things have to fall into place for a successful, a successful spike strip. But uh, here you have, yeah, yeah, he's kind of gesturing at the officer, trying to communicate, and and you can see the officer. He's willing to negotiate. He's you know not uh, you know I'm, I'm sure he's using every negotiating uh, tactic that he has been taught. 
and uh, just getting him to p just pull over. Everything's going to be fine. Just Oh, look at that. An opportunity to box him in, and now they've done it. And now they've done it, and they don't feel like he's going to go anywhere. Th look at this. Look at this. This is exactly what we were talking about. He's afraid. He's a little agitated, but he's, 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 he's not going to put up a big fight here. He does not pose a big danger to them. He just doesn't want to go away. Unfortunately, that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to take him in peacefully, try and talk some sense into him, see if there's maybe a mental health crisis that is uh, on display here, or perhaps maybe he's just under the influence in any event. you got to give it to these officers. Yes. Yeah, a little sleight of hand there. Absolutely, Colleen, you're right about that. A little bit of sleight. You, you distract him on the on the driver's side, and they had units pulling over on all other three sides of him with nowhere to go. They didn't think he was a big threat. He's not going to go ramming through the roadblock there, and now they can determine uh, what the problem is here, who he is, what his deal is, and uh, obviously take him off to Men's Central Booking and process him. But obviously, uh, a great job by those officers to make that calculation, to decide that, you know what, this is somebody that we can either negotiate with or maybe we could trick him into slowing down, coming to a stop here before this gets any further. And that's exactly what they, they did. That's exactly what happened. And fortunately, it's come to a peaceful end. It's okay. That was good.